Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I got the rock base done. Almost. It, there's no varnish on it yet, but it's almost done. And this is going to be used for the blue-footed boobies that are back there. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this foam rock. It was the first one I did, and so um, basically I'm going to tell you some things that... <laughs> I should have known before I started and I didn't and so if you want to make something out of foam uh, and use the the hot wire thingy in order to, to cut it into shapes uh, you might want to know a couple of things that are in this video because I I kind of messed up a couple of places it still turned out you know like a rock though it looks like a what I was trying for was one of the basalt rocks from the Galapagos Islands and I think I came pretty close um, now I'm also at the end going to go ahead and put the boobies on here. I thought I would wait and, and just show you how this was made first. I won't know entirely until the, the boobies are actually attached to the rock if I got the proportions right or not. I'm thinking maybe I should have made it about half as tall or another third again taller. But like I said, I won't know because I didn't draw it out. I didn't I didn't make a plan exactly to make sure that I was getting it that I was getting it right. But we'll find out in a few minutes. So let me show you how I did this and, and tell you about all the things that I should have done a little bit differently. <laughs> I did at least put the birds on top of the blue insulation boards in the beginning just to get a feel for the shapes and the proportions and, and kind of to see how deep the base needed to be. But I really couldn't see exactly what they were going to look like. But once I decided how big to make the base, I started using my new hot knife to cut out the foam into blocks. Most foam sculptors, you know, the, the guys who really know what they're doing, <laughs> they seem to use tools from the hot wire foam factory, but that company charges twice as much as the ones I bought, and I thought $30 is more than enough to spend on a tool that I'm really not sure I'll ever want to use again. It's actually the only thing I spent money on for this whole entire project, and that, that was enough. And they do seem to work really well. I cut through the foam really fast. I very quickly realized that I shouldn't have been doing it inside the house because obviously when you're cutting foam by burning through it, you're going to be creating smoke, hydrocarbon but smoke basically. And it's not really something that I should have been breathing. I should have known better. I should have done it out in the garage. Next time, that's definitely what I'm gonna do. Now, after I cut the blocks, I cut out a section of the middle one down at the bottom so that I can put a plastic bag of sand inside of it to weight it down. And that way I won't have to worry so much about the base falling over with the weight of the birds on top of it. Now the next thing I had to do was actually glue these foam pieces together. So I found a video from Black Magic Craft out on YouTube. He tested a number of different types of glue and I just happened to have one of the three options that he recommends down in my basement. I can't remember why I bought it, <laughs> but it does work really well. It comes out really, really thick, and for that reason, I really should have watched a few more videos uh, from people who actually know what they're doing with foam. The Gorilla Glue construction adhesive grabs on and holds really fast. That's great. It does cure in 24 hours, even though there's no air contact with the glue, and that's great. But if you put it on too thick, like I did, I, I did spread it around, but I just didn't spread it thin enough, and the hot wire cannot cut through it unless you use an extremely thin layer of the glue. It just, it's really tough stuff. You don't really need any more than a really, really thin layer either, which is nice, but I just didn't spread it out thin enough, and that was going to be a real problem. I let the glue cure for 24 hours, and then I started cutting it with the hot wire tool. And I was doing it pretty much at random, but trying to get the planes um, so that it looked sort of rock-like. And because I was quite often going through at least two or three blocks, it was having to cut across those glue lines. And sometimes it worked just fine. <laughs> And then other times it really didn't. It hung up uh, on the glue because the, the glue dries really, really hard. And where it was too thick, um, it was actually starting to feel um, a little bit like I might actually break that little thin wire of the tool. I did end up uh, getting it done, but there were parts of the glue that actually stuck up. Um, and I had to cut those off with a, an X-Acto knife. I just couldn't cut through it cleanly with a hot wire. 
that wouldn't have happened if I had uh, spread that glue out really super, super thin. Now, I didn't squish the foam down tight enough or put on enough weight to really squish the, the glue flat. And that left pretty noticeable gaps between the pieces. Uh, that was kind of unfortunate too. So I had to fill those in with some air dry clay that was left over from making the blue footed boobies earlier. It all worked out, but if I had known what I was doing, it would have worked out a whole lot <laughs> easier. I did take a video while I was using the short hot engraving tool to put dips and holes in the surface of the foam, but my camera erased it for some reason. Sorry about that, but you can imagine. Um, it, was, it was pretty easy to do, just kind of stabbed it and messed around. I also used that engraving tool to make a deep hole at the top. That's going to be filled in with Magic Sculpt because it, I, I think it needed something a little bit stronger than just the foam to hold that long wire that's sticking out below the Mr. Booby's foot. Now there was still a lot of flat areas that needed more texture so I used my Sure Foam shaving tool. I did that out in the garage because it made it a really big mess, but it did rough up the, the flat areas and it made it look more, um, more natural. And then I had to take a knife and cut off all the bits of hard glue that were still sticking up. That, that took a long time. I wouldn't have had to do that if I'd made it thinner, obviously, but well, next time I'll do it better. Then I went back out to the garage again and I um, got some sand to use for a weight. I, I put it in a plastic bag and fit it into that hole at the bottom of the rock and taped it in. Then I traced around the bottom of the foam onto a piece of thin press board. I, I think that's what it's called. It was part of a crate uh, that my new wood stove came in. I took it out to the garage and cut it out with my jigsaw. And then I brought it back in and glued it to the bottom of the rock with the construction glue. That needed to cure for a few hours, but I didn't leave it overnight because it stuck on pretty tight. I still had to fill in those big gaps between the blocks of foam though. If I had used less glue, that wouldn't have been needed, but it, 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 didn't, it didn't really matter that much in the end because I did have some air dry clay left over from making the boobies and I used that to fill in those, those cracks. I also used it to cover the gap between the foam and the press board bottom. And I did my best to mimic the texture of the foam so that there wouldn't be a noticeable difference between the clay and the foam when it was finished. After the, the air dry clay was all dry, I, I left it overnight. And then I mixed up something that's called Monster Mud 2.0. The original Monster Mud is a recipe um, that is a mixture of latex paint and pre-mixed drywall joint compound. A lot of people who do Halloween props use it. Uh, it's used a lot in theater props. But this Monster Mud 2.0 is a recipe from the Van Oaks Props guy on YouTube. And instead of the um, drywall joint compound, he uses latex paint with thin set mortar. Uh, just a half and half mixture of the dry thin set mortar and the latex paint. I didn't happen to have any mortar in the house and it comes in 50 pound bags. It's really cheap, but um, that's heavy. And I, you know, if I'm only gonna use half a cup of it, I didn't really need a whole 50 pounds. So I decided to look up and see what's in it. And it turns out that the mortar and the Mapai grout that I had left over from my garden gnomes, they're both made with Portland cement. They've got other stuff mixed in with them to make them different, but I figured the primary thing that they've got is Portland cement, so it would be close enough. Um, and so I tried it out. I mixed up some of the latex paint that I had left over from the mousse. It's called Tuxedo. It's one of the colors that my daughter, Jessie Rashi used when she showed us how to mix up some nice gray and brown fur colors. And I mixed that in with the grout about half and half. And it worked really good. It, it's making the paint thick enough to cover the foam really nice, but it's not so thick that it would cover up all the holes that I put there on purpose. So it was, it was really perfect. 
I let it sit overnight to make sure that the Monster Mud 2.0 was completely cured before I started doing anything else. I wanted to kind of warm it up and make it look a little bit more like a rock, but I didn't want to put too much detail on it because it, that might pull the eyes away from the, the birds. <laughs> and the birds are kind of the whole point of this whole project. First thing I did was um, put some burnt sienna in a couple of places. Um, I did that to make it look like iron oxide. Uh, I lightened some of it up by putting in just a little bit of Naples yellow to, and mixed it in just with the brush with the, uh, with the burnt sienna. And after that was dry, I made up a, a, a fairly dark gray using black acrylic paint the burnt sienna and some golden glazing liquid and a little bit more water so it's kind of a runny mixture really really dark and a little bit warmer than the tuxedo color and i wanted it to be runny enough so that it would go down into all of the dips and show some of the blue gray under it i mixed up just a little bit of white in the black and burnt sienna color that i had and then I got out a small foam brush, used it really, really dry, and I just kind of scraped it over the top of the rock so that um, it, it would just lighten up everything except for the dips, and it would just kind of bring out all of the texture. And then I went back over, added just a little bit more white, and went back over some of the areas to kind of highlight some of those sharp edges on it. I let the paint dry overnight again, and now I'm ready to add the birds. Before I can do that, I had to mix up the two-part magic sculpt, and I filled the hole that I made for the extended wire that comes down underneath the male booby's foot. Any brand of epoxy clay would have worked. I just happened to have some magic sculpt on hand. And I, I did this because I thought it would be stronger than just poking the wire down into the foam. It's just a little bit of um, extra insurance, I guess you can say. I also filled in on that little extra hole that I'd made for no obvious reason. I'm, I'm going to have to go back over it and paint it gray after everything else is done. I haven't actually done that yet, so I'll do that after the video is up. Now, I also wanted the, f the foot, you know, the Mr. Booby's foot, I wanted it to be stuck down onto the rock too. I thought that would really help stabilize it. But for some reason, I kind of forgot what I was doing, and I spread the Gorilla construction adhesive over the bottom of both of his feet, even the one that he's waving around in the air to show it off. That was kind of silly, but it's underneath his foot, so you can't see it. <laughs> so don't tell anybody. The Magic Sculpt hasn't cured. It's just, um, you know, it, it's really easy to move that wire around, and the construction adhesive doesn't stick things on immediately, so... I still had to somehow stabilize it until everything can cure. I did happen to have some really soft yarn on hand. It was left over from back when I thought I was going to teach myself how to do some Tunisian crochet. So I, I, I used it to wrap around the feet, around the rock. I kind of tied it off really tight and I just hoped it was going to hold. And strangely enough, it actually did. I still had to get the lady booby on there, so I put some glue on the bottom of her feet, both of them, <laughs> which was actually appropriate this time, and I stuck her onto the rock. You can see that I've already bent her toes to match the shape of the rock. I, I did that with Mr. Booby too, uh, when you guys weren't looking, but it still isn't stable enough to stand up all, all on her own because she's not on the flat surface that I originally designed her for. So I used the same yarn trick that I'd used with Mr. Booby and it actually worked again. But I was still kind of holding my breath for a while before I was absolutely sure that they were going to stay where they belonged. So now they're all done. Um, the, the construction adhesive is holding them on really well. Well, of course, this one has the magic sculpt too, but she's just being held on with that glue and it, it really is holding on really strong. I've never used it before for an art project, but I'm, I probably will again. There's probably a lot of things that I would do differently if I did this over. I'm not that I'm going to, but um, 
because it started out as a really simple project, I thought, just to show people how to make a bird stand up on her two feet. <laughs> and then I added Mr. Booby because, you know, one booby just would be lonely, right? And then I decided, well, I can't just have them both sitting there. They've got to have some kind of base. Well, maybe it could be a rock. I just kind of like kept adding things on without actually thinking things ahead of time. <laughs> And you can run into problems when you do that, obviously. Um, fortunately, you can learn how to do almost everything on YouTube, and I think they came out just fine. There are a couple of places that I have to touch up. I haven't done that yet. The toes, when they were bent, um, there was just a little bit of the paint got uh, scratched. I have to put that blue back on just a, a little tiny places. I have to cover up the glue that's showing over here on this side. Uh, I have to put some varnish on. I'm going to use uh, Americana Ultra Matte on everything except for the eyes, which I've already put um, fingernail polish on to make them really bright. If you have any experience with making stones or anything else with foam and you would like to share with us the things that I should have done instead, <laughs> please put your comments down below so that we can all learn uh, from each other because I was really kind of making things up as I go, um, just look, looking at a few videos and well, I think it turned out okay. It was obviously not done exactly the way it should have been. So if you have any comments about that or about anything on this this project, or if you'd like to tell us about your project, please go ahead and leave comments down below. And be sure to come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.